This is Plant-Based Briefing, Myth-Busting Soy, Women's Health and Hormones, from switchforgood.org. And I'm Marian Erickson, and this is the Curated Content Plant-Based Podcast, where I narrate a variety of articles with permission on plant-based and vegan topics in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. And today's article is from switchforgood.org. They're an amazing, evidence-based nonprofit dedicated to rattling the accepted norms around dairy and health, and they're working to abolish the current system of dietary racial oppression, and they're promoting solutions for climate change. Also, check out their awesome podcast. You'll find it all at switchforgood.org. And now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. Myth-Busting Soy, Women's Health and Hormones, from switchforgood.org. Women's health and hormones. It's no secret that women run this world, especially healthy, strong, energized women who are fueled by soy. Despite the bounty of misinformation out there, soy products like tofu, tempeh, soy milk, and edamame are incredibly beneficial for most people, and especially women. We're addressing some of the big myths we've heard circulating about soy and women's health, while debunking them with evidence. Soy shouldn't be feared when its powerful compounds can vastly improve health in multiple ways. Instead, soy should be intentionally incorporated into a balanced diet to reap the many benefits. So grab your mother, sister, friend, etc., and enjoy a tofu taco, tempeh sandwich, or soy latte together. Your health will thank you. Myth number one, soy feeds breast cancer. According to the American Cancer Society, one in eight American women get breast cancer. They note that what we choose to eat and what we choose to avoid affects this risk and recommend putting more plants and fewer animal foods on our plates. They specifically mention that, quote, soy foods, such as tofu, may lower the risk of cancers of the breast, unquote, which aligns with research on over 600,000 participants, showing that, quote, a high intake of soy foods exhibits a beneficial role in reducing the risk of breast cancer, unquote. What about dairy? Back in 2018, the American Cancer Society said the jury was out on how cow's milk affects breast cancer risk, but two years later, a groundbreaking study shed light on the issue. Research, including over 50,000 participants, revealed that people who drank more cow's milk, regardless of the milk's fat content, increased their risk of getting breast cancer by 50%. Replacing cow's milk with soy milk, on the other hand, dropped their risk by 32%. As you can see, it's extremely unfortunate that many women opt for cow's milk over soy milk to lower their risk of getting breast cancer. Some women who already have breast cancer also steer clear of soy milk out of fear that they'll be fanning the flames. Would they continue this practice if they knew that a leading national or global authority disagreed with them? What two highly reputable organizations agreed that soy is safe for breast cancer survivors? Three? The consensus was actually reached by five titans in this space. The American Cancer Society, the American Institute for Cancer Research, the World Cancer Research Fund International, and the Canadian Cancer Society. They all agree soy is safe for breast cancer survivors. Not only is soy safe, large-scale research shows that it's protective. And the good news is it doesn't take much to have an effect. A meta-analysis of 23 studies, including more than 300,000 people, found that adding the equivalent of half a cup of tofu or a tall glass of soy milk to our daily diet drops the risk of dying from breast cancer by 24%. Given that breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in American women, taking one in 39 lives, it makes sense to do what we can to protect ourselves and stay healthy. Including more soy in our diets is an excellent way to stack the odds in our favor. Myth number two. Pregnant women should avoid soy both for their own health and for their babies, too. The debate over whether pregnant women should eat or avoid soy foods during pregnancy seems to be a particularly contentious topic. Thankfully, dedicated scientists have put years into studying this very issue, and their findings do a great deal to clear up the confusion. Several recent studies have explored the connection between soy consumption during pregnancy and their risk of gestational diabetes, a condition where non-diabetic women develop high blood sugar during pregnancy, increasing the risk of complications for both mother and child. It turns out that, compared to pregnant women who eat less soy, those that have more of it dramatically cut their risk and end up with less than half the odds of developing gestational diabetes due to better blood sugar control. Randomized controlled clinical research also found that, compared to a more animal-based diet, 
a soy-rich, plant-based diet led to healthier blood sugar levels, indicating that replacing animal protein with soy may be responsible. Putting it all together, evidence is mounting that soy can support a healthier pregnancy. It's also become clear in recent years that while soy was once rumored to cause birth defects, this myth has been put to rest. Instead, far more robust evidence now demonstrates that pregnant women who consume soy give birth to children with a lower risk of birth defects. Recent evidence also suggests that pregnant women who eat and drink more soy give birth to children with a lower risk of hyperactivity disorders and peer problems. In other words, soy intake is linked to benefits for both mother and child. Myth number three. Soy estrogens wreak hormonal havoc, disrupting menstrual cycles and causing hot flashes. The idea that soy prevents ovulation is a mere myth. Though not medically concerning, soy consumption can slightly increase menstrual cycle length, though, according to a recent review of over 400 reports. The paper, published by a team of international researchers, underscored that soy and its bioactive components don't disrupt our hormones. They pose no problems to our thyroids and, quote, Adverse effects are also not seen on breast or endometrial tissue or estrogen levels in women or testosterone or estrogen levels or sperm or semen parameters in men, unquote. Not only is there no evidence of hormonal harm, the use of soy and its biologically active components to treat hot flashes has actually been of interest to scientists for 30 years. Consuming minuscule amounts of these components doesn't have much of an effect, but it doesn't take much to experience significant benefits. 19 randomized controlled trials, including over a 1,000 women, found that getting the equivalent of even half a cup of cooked soybeans per day provides enough of these helpful components to significantly reduce both the frequency and severity of hot flashes. In fact, a randomized controlled trial of postmenopausal women published last year found that switching to a healthy plant-based diet, including half a cup of daily soybeans, cut their number of hot flashes by 30%, and their number of moderate to severe hot flashes by 42% compared to people who continued with their usual diet. After three months of eating this way, the majority of women even reported becoming free from moderate to severe hot flashes, while none of the women eating their regular diet experienced this tremendous benefit. As a bonus, women who ate a plant-based diet with daily soybeans also improved their quality of life in the psychosocial, physical, and sexual domains, a true testament to the power of soy and other plant foods. Conclusion We hope this helps settle any fears about this powerful superfood. Looking for some meal inspiration? Try this quick Mexican tofu scramble linked here. Pro tip, this recipe is an easy way to clean out your fridge and use up various veggies. The combinations are endless and sure to taste great. You just listened to Myth Busting Soy, Women's Health and Hormones from switchforgood.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson. And I've said this before on different episodes about soy, that I'm one of those women who, while I didn't participate in the study, I had the benefits of completely eliminating my hot flashes and they were severe. I credit it to a whole food plant-based diet with soy. We eat a lot of tofu, some tempeh, edamame, and I usually have a glass of soy milk every day in a latte. But I think it's so sad that these myths are still so rampant. There are so many people who avoid soy because their doctors have told them to, and these are breast cancer survivors. So the information they're being given is actually false and it's actually harming them. It's such a shame. As always, I put a link to the original post in the show notes and the original post has all of the studies and references cited with links. So if you know someone who can benefit from this information, they can drill down and look at all the details in the studies themselves and even send it to their doctors if necessary. So please share this episode with anyone who can benefit and thanks for listening.